Welcome to the Greenwich Means Business podcast. Hello and welcome back to the Greenwich Means Business podcast. I am Dardan and today we are joined by two guests who are members of the Global Mobility Programs. Would you like to introduce yourselves? Hello, my name is Amelia. I'm studying advertising and digital marketing and last summer I went to India. Hello, my name is Ana Cristina. I study the same. I'm on my third year now and I went to France for four months. Very nice. And could you tell us um, about the Global Mobility Programme? So give us like a summary. What is the Global Mobility Programme and how uh, are the different programmes different from each other? Yeah, so the Global Mobility Programme is like a type of exchange. Um, So you basically go for a term or a year abroad and somebody else comes here to take your place. And... Yeah, it can be for three, four months, for a year, or just for a summer. That is like around two weeks or five weeks. Um, And yeah, it's open to everyone that studies. Um, And yeah, I think it's so cool. So it's kind of like a student exchange program, right? Okay. And um, so where could could students be... Uh, flying out to like uh, the, is there any specific places they have to fly out to or is it randomly chosen or so in the application you have like depending if you go for a term or a year you have like um, different types of uh, different types of options depending on what you study so you have for example for the business um, um, faculty you do have like tons of options you have like Spain France, the Netherlands, and then for the summer program, it doesn't really matter what you study, so you can basically go like... Most of the summer programs anyone can apply to, but I think there are specific ones, like Cairo in Egypt, I think is for only engineering students, Hmm. but for example, India was open to anybody, I think a lot of the European ones like Prague are also just open... To anybody who wants to go really hmm. yeah. interesting and um when so how can students apply who is eligible to apply and when are, when is the deadline for uh, these applications so the deadline is the 28th of february for everything hmm. and um for the term and the year abroad students on their first year going to their second year can apply for the summer program, it's different. You can apply if you are in your second year or in your third year now. Hmm. And I think... Yeah, they do, I think, prioritise first and second years for the summer abroad. Yeah. But if there are spaces um, in India, they let a lot of third-year students go as well hmm. because they had some spaces available. Hmm. Okay. So you both had, have had very different experiences. So um, coming to you first, um, so... How, what was your process of, you know, selecting India or being chosen to go to India and how was the actual experience itself? Yeah, um, it was quite rushed for me because I was a bit silly and didn't do my research before. Hmm. But quite quickly I realised there was a deadline in a week and decided between spending a summer in Europe or venturing a bit further out and going to India, hmm. which was very scary. But ultimately I sort of decided... Am I going to go to India otherwise? Maybe, but Mm. maybe not. Whereas I know I could go to Europe a lot easier. Yeah. So I thought, why not go India? And I did put Prague as one of my options. And I sort of thought, I'll let the university decide whichever one I get picked for. And I got picked for India. And I thought... I guess I'm going there. Yeah, why not? (laughs) Just thrown in the deep end. Yeah. It was good. So what was it like? Um, what happened when you first exited the plane? What was your first reaction to that? It was pretty crazy. I actually went, me and a friend both applied and we both went together, which was oh, nice. Um, a lot less scary, but still, we'd both never really been that far. And we were on the plane together thinking like, wow, we went from just being in London together to stepping into India and... I suppose it was a bit of a culture shock. Everything mm. is different. 
it looks different, people are different, food is different, culture is different. But we were so welcomed by our host uni that I didn't really feel the culture shock that everyone was kind of saying prepare for and you're going to be homesick. The host uni was so hospitable and welcoming. They made us feel so safe, like we were really taken care of. That mm. It was pretty smooth, to be honest. Going with the university compared to going alone, it was very smooth. I wasn't that uncomfortable or as maybe you would be if you travelled alone. So it's a nice first step into venturing out of Europe, I'd say. Yeah, lovely to, to hear. Use these programmes. Lovely to hear. And how about your experience? So tell us where you ended up going. Yeah, so I went to France, to Nantes. Mm. So I just, I had this, for the year that I applied, there was only two options. So it was the Netherlands or France. Mm. And I'm doing advertising and digital marketing with language and I'm doing French. Oh, okay. So I was like, of course, I'm going to, my first option, you usually have three options mm. when you do the form to apply. So my first, since I only had two options, was first France and then the Netherlands. Hmm. And I got chosen to go to France. And for me, it was great because I study French. So it was like, I'm very good for to improve my French language, hmm. to like live in So you, France. you fit in straight away, basically. So-so. Yeah. <laughs> so-so because you think you know the language until you go to the country and you're hmm. like, this is not like what I'm studying this is at what all. I learned at the classroom like, no. yeah. <laughs> so different they talk so fast and everything but after four months I do feel like I can speak better and I understand everything mm. even though all the classes are teach in English I did had French like classes as well and you also interact every day with French people so it's like you need to learn you go to groceries you go to shopping and you need to t talk in French mm. um, so for me that was like very very good experience um yeah that's why i chose france and i never went to france before so i wanted to go interesting yeah yeah and um so coming on to the language barrier thing did you uh, was there a, a similar problem with uh, yourself or um i mean we're lucky enough that so many people in the world speak english so mm. at the host university they all spoke very very good english like that wasn't a problem at all and when we were going out of campus on trips, they were taking us, they were speaking for us. Mm. They were, like I said, very hospitable. But when we did go on trips and we had a few days to walk around by ourselves, I would say it was a bit difficult. Mm. But again, a lot of people speak English, so we're very lucky. And we were also very fortunate because one person who came on the trip with us, his family were actually originally from Punjab and he'd mm. never been, but he spoke the language. So... Very we're handy. going around with him and because one time when we went on a trip without the host university we went to the Taj Mahal mm. which was amazing and the driver turned up and he really didn't speak like English at all and we had like a 12 hour coach oh. through India and I think we would have really struggled without so yeah shout out to that guy because he did save us shout out to him indeed yeah. <laughs> and um do you have any tips for any students who wish to go on the same programs that you, you lot yourselves did? Um, I'd say just apply, like, don't be scared because I think it can be a really scary experience, but if you apply, you can always pull out and it's really not that scary. Like I said before, if you're going with the university, you can trust you're going to be looked after. Even in a country like India, which might seem a bit more different, a bit more scary, like I said, they really look after you. You're going with a group of people. Uh, someone from Greenwich, Anna, she came with us for the first week and made sure we settled in and just do it. Like, it's it's not scary. Just do it and it's going to be positive at the end of the day. Yeah. It's a good experience. And yourself, do you have a tip for any students? Um. <clears throat> yeah, so... Yeah, to apply, to do it, to don't be scared of it. Mm. For me, I'm not a home student, so I'm international. So for me, a lot of my friends were like, there's no point of going if I'm even like an, like a broad student here in the UK. So they were like, yeah. what's the point? But then it's like, if you have the opportunity to travel to somewhere 
like new and learn something new, new pe- meet new people, why not? Mm. And it was so good. Like all, ev- all the people that I know that have been to like abroad with this program, they, they never regret it. Like you always get something from there. And like, it can be life changing. For me, France was, was like life changing. Like I met so many new people, like my French um, got amazing, like mm. way better. Um, and yeah, I think my tip is yeah to apply, to don't be scared and to like make the most out of it as yeah. well. It's like go there, try to go to like every event that your university like is hosting, like talk to everyone and like don't be scared of like being like alone as well. Mm. Because that was like a big thing, like being alone for a lot of people is like they have never been alone. Like they have never lived by themselves or like especially so in a foreign yeah. country. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's scary, but it's like you grow up, you grow so much from that experience. So mm. yeah, it's a good way to do it, like throw yourself in the deep end. Like I said, yeah. I was lucky to go with someone I know, but <laughs> you're going in a group of people. You're gonna find people you like, and yeah, I don't know anyone that had a negative experience. Even the people on my trip that I know, one of my friends who was sick a lot, like he ate. Mm a lot of food and I was lucky not to get sick but even him who had like a lot of downs in the trip I'm sure he doesn't regret it I haven't met anyone that does regret it still memorable so yeah I yeah. guess you can take that as a positive Definitely memorable. yeah <laughs> and um so you both study the same course right and um, how did the teaching dif- differ in the countries uh, you both ended up in it was different, obviously, just because of the program. We're studying a specific marketing course. Mm. But in India, at least, it was a kind of general study. So we did politics, history, sociology. We did art classes. We had yoga every morning. So it's like a very structured day. Mm. And like you said before, another tip is just do go to every single class because sometimes I was sleeping in in the morning and not going to yoga. And I regret it because it's an opportunity to have like a day filled with stuff and... But yeah, the course was very, very good. There was lots of different things. We also did cooking class, a more practical thing. Hmm. But the teaching is different, but it's kind of not comparable because we're doing a university degree in specific modules. This was like kind of an overlook of the way that history is in India, for example. Hmm. But the teaching wasn't that different. It was very similar. One thing that was noticeable was they were very formal and I remember one guy just going on his phone in the class just for a second to like check the time and the teacher was like very offended because Mm. I mean education's a privilege if someone's coming to teach you they expect you to be like fully fully focused which I think maybe is a difference compared to in our lectures I'm sure there's loads of people on their phone turning up late yeah not fully respecting the teachers Uh, that's the only difference I'd say but again it's not that comparable so yeah and yourself was there any differences um so i think from the summer program and the if you go like for a term or a year abroad it's different because you do when you go for a term or a year abroad you do need to complete credits mm. because the, you need to pass all your exams you need to do the assignments it's like you're doing like a term or the whole year abroad and you do need to pass basically yeah. Um, so for me it was very different in France they do have like four hours lectures with only like Whoa. yeah with only like 20 minutes <laughs> in between two hours mm. so it was a lot and then you met you were in your class there was French people and they were so used to it and then all the exchange students we were like like after two torture. hours <laughs> yeah it was too long but after like at the end of like the last month I was already used to it of mm. having these long lectures um so yeah it's very different they do also do exams for every class mm. it's not like here that you do more assignments yeah and there is exams so it was good because now that I'm third year and I do need to do an exam I feel more prepared than the people that stay here only doing assignments yeah um because I did like for exams there um so it's it was very different but I do feel like it was good for me 
to improve my study skills here in Greenwich when I came back. Mm, understandable. Yeah. And um, what did you enjoy the most out of your experiences? Um, there's a lot, I'd say, within the course. Um, it was a lot of fun just, like I said, the general history courses, learning about history that I mean, we wouldn't be taught here. And then the more practical classes like cooking, they literally like taught us how to cook from scratch, like very traditional recipes. It was really fun. But I think probably the highlight would be the trips they took us on because mm. they were just amazing. Like included in like us going there, they took us to the Himalayas and they let us have like two free days by ourselves, which was really nice because in the university you're kind of locked in. You have to go to classes, which makes sense but it can be a bit restricted so I know mm. we all had a lot of fun and as lovely as Indian food was they had an Italian restaurant mm. and all us British people were very happy to have something close to having home. like yeah. <laughs> pasta and pizza and we went on a tuk tuk and like the freedom of that and the Himalayas also was a lot cooler so I think that's why it was a lot more enjoyable because it was we went in June July and it was so hot Mm. like 38 degrees so humid hmm. but the Himalayas was amazing and we paid I think only a hundred pound extra and they also took us to the Taj Mahal and put us in a five-star hotel for a few days which was also not bad <laughs> amazing like the trips were incredible nice so. and yourself what was, what was the best moment um for me the best thing about my trip in France was the people that I met because <clears throat> after four months, you get to know so many people and you get like very strong connections because as we said before, you are there with a group that is in the same position as you. Like they don't know anyone else. They're in a new country. So we all bonded in some way because of that. Mm. And now I can say that I have like so many friends that I met in that experience from all over the world. And I still talk to them. We still see each other when we can. They visit me in London, I visit them in their country. So that's like what I love the most about the experience. Also because France is amazing. So being in Nantes, I was in this city called Nantes. Mm -hmm. It was very near to Bordeaux, for example, that is like famous for the wine and like it's beautiful. Then Paris and Marseille and well, mm, travel more around France was so cool as well. Mm. And yeah. Lovely to hear. And what was your, what did you find most challenging about your experiences? So what were your kind of like difficulties? Um, I'd say I didn't feel it as much, but I think a lot of people would get homesick. Mm. I mean, you're away from your family and friends for a month. You're in a different country. India is very far away. I was actually there on my 21st birthday. So mm. the only time I was a bit like, like I didn't get to spend time with a lot of my close friends and family mm. on my birthday. And I know a lot of people like struggled a bit, missing people, missing stuff they're used to. But I mean, because essentially your connection was good, you can FaceTime. Yeah, it's still it's not a big problem. Hmm. Yeah, essentially you you are kind of living in India at the time, yeah. so it's understandable. But apart from that, maybe being careful with the food and having to buy bottled water, hmm. and missing out on my favorite snacks. But which are. I don't know, just general, like even a normal packet of crisps, like they're, they're very <laughs> spicy, the crisps. And there was one brand of like non-spicy crisps they sold. And I think we sold out the whole stock of it, like in the first day mm. that we entered the uni, which is a bit embarrassing. But... <laughs> oh, you're contributing to the but, economy there. Yeah, so. <laughs> pack, some, pack some of your favourite snacks to yeah. remind your family, I'd say. That's another, uh, another tip you'd give? Yeah, Okay. But nothing too challenging. Mm. So what about yourself? What was the most challenging part of your experience in France? <clears throat> um, for me, it was the language. I think because you feel like you know French until you, or the language until you get to the country. They talk very fast and they have like their slang and everything. Mm. Um, so that was very challenging at the beginning. At least for like the first week, it was like just going to the shops and didn't even understand what I was buying in the shops. Um, so that was challenging, but we did got, for example, my French classmates, they did really help us. Like 
to all the international students. They were so, so nice, like giving us tips or like even like talking to us like, oh, this is what sh you should say if you go like to a supermarket and you need to ask for something specific and things like that. Um, so the language was a big challenge, at least for me, even though I study French. So if you don't study French, I feel like it's going to be challenging. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, being homesick, it is it, because you're going to be four months abroad or like a year. So that's a long time. Mm -hmm. And it does feel, even though it's a long time, it passed so fast for me. It was like four months went <gasps> fly by, but you do miss your home. You do get like, I wish like, I don't know, they play different music here, yeah. or things like that. Like even this most stupid things, it does, you do miss home a yeah, lot. Yeah, of course. But since you are with a group of a lot of international students that are um, in the same position as you, you do, you don't feel that much mm. because... You're in the same boat, you can relate same, to each yeah, other. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So yeah. So we've heard both of your experiences, so... Ultimately, what would you rate your experience and um, would you recommend this to future students wishing to do this? Yeah, like, even though there were some challenges, definitely it's worth it. Recommend it 100%. Overall, it was just very fun. It's a good experience. Mm, and yourself? Yeah, 100%. I tell to everyone, like, you need to apply because you have this opportunity. After uni, maybe you're not going to have this, this type of... Um, opportunity again mm. is like it's literally because you travel almost not for free but for way less than you you will spend in like a normal trip or you know you're not gonna be living this again so it's like if you have the opportunity why not taking it mm. and who doesn't like to travel and like to meet new cultures and stuff mm. so i always say to everyone to apply to for it even for the summer school like i i went to summer school as well and i'm gonna apply again this year so, yeah, I really recommend it. Nice, lovely to hear. And so you uh, you mentioned the fees as well. Um, so how does that work for those um, wishing to know more about that? I think it depends, again, on the duration of your stay and the place that you go to. For example, to France, I did got... There's like a Greenwich bursary for the term or year abroad. They... It depends if you meet like a specific cr criteria, they send you a specific money. Mm. Um, it's kind it's, of reflective of the student loan as well. Yeah. I think. Oh, okay, makes Depending sense. Depending on what maintenance loan you get, it is sort of reflective. But it does yeah. depend. I think the Prague trip had more bursaries or the accommodation yeah. was free. Yeah, mm. I went to Prague and it was almost all funded. Mm. So it was like literally travel for free. Oh, nice. Um, in France, of course, you stay more time, like when it's a term or year abroad, you stay more time there. But the university do, do help um, money-wise a lot. Mm. It's not like they're just going to put you in another country and you're not working. And like, it's another, it's Eros, for example. So it's like, mm. they do help you a lot. Um, so yeah, they also have... Um, Santander um, bursary. Mm. I got that one for my summer school, um, program. Um, so they do have a lot of fundings and yeah. bursaries to offer depending on where you're going and for how long. So it's not like you're you're gonna be fine. Mm. Depends a lot on the program, but yeah. even if you don't get any of the funding, it's still very affordable um, compared to if you travel alone and it's definitely worth it because even if I could buy a flight to India anytime I'm not going to be going with a new group of people um, being in a really safe accommodation and but the price does vary a lot for India we had to pay our flight and they paid the tuition and we had to pay part of our we had to pay part of our tuition but the accommodation was included for free oh, as well nice. as meals including they took us out to eat and paid for it but out of England it's kind of just spending money that we had to spend. I don't know about you, mm. but the spending money in India, I didn't spend a lot at all because mm. everything is super cheap. So I kind of just paid the flight a small fee and spent a very small amount. So it is affordable. And if you can't afford it, there are bursaries. Like if you mm. reach out, 
I say definitely don't not apply because of money. Just yeah. inquire, and mm. I'm sure the university puts a lot of money into it, and there is the funding. Mm. Mm, very interesting. Are both of you hoping to take part in any more um, global mobility programs in the future? Yeah, I'm gonna apply this year for. I'm in my third year, so I can only apply for the summer program. I want to go to India. There's new countries as well, so I would love to go to Bali. There's Fiji. Those are like my top three. Mm. Um, but there's also like Greece, which I think is very cool as well. Um, they have Ghana, which is crazy. Mm. Um, yeah, they have new countries and they're so cool. So yeah. do, do they update um, the country list every year or um, is it kind of just depending on uh, who the university has agreements with? I think yeah. they do. Yeah, uh, some are reoccurring, like Prague has been there for years. Mm -hmm. I think India is maybe only two years old or mm. maybe longer. I'm not sure. But there wasn't the option to go to Bali last year. Otherwise, I definitely would have applied to that as well. Yeah. Mm. But I definitely will be wanting to do it when I can. I'm working this summer, so I won't be able to. Mm. But if I'm allowed in my third year, then I'll definitely apply to get into Prague in Europe or... I mean, if we can go to the Caribbean now or Bali, then definitely. Why not? <laughs> yeah. And um, you also mentioned that um, that some places in India didn't speak much English. So did you pick up any Hindi while you were over there? or? Yeah. Um, actually, one of our courses was in Hindi. So we didn't learn a lot because obviously it's a very complicated language. Mm. But we learn how to say thank you, you're welcome. Um, some sort of just conversational things, nothing mm. too complicated, and how to count to five. Yes. Which, I mean, didn't help us get by that much, but it was nice just to be able to thank people mm. when eating out and buying things. Yeah, just the yeah. standard um, gestures. Yeah. Cool. Thank you both for coming today. It's very lovely having you. And uh, don't forget the deadline is on the 28th, so get applying. And we'll see you in the next episode. Thank you. Thank you. You can find our podcast on Spotify, Apple and Google Podcasts. Subscribe to never miss an episode.